Hey, hello there, my lovely YouTube friends. Yes, it's me, the market sniper, the crypto sniper, and the great reset sniper. It's just the reset sniper, but it's going to be great. Um, anyway, coming at you um, on my tour of a rather warm place, uh, the island of Cyprus. Um, every August, I like to take uh, my daughter on a bit of a tour. She comes to dad and uh, get some time. So we've been to Switzerland. We rode along the, the rivers and lakes of Switzerland on bicycles, toured, saw the nature. Um, we've traveled to Portugal. We've traveled all over Europe and many other places in our little journey. And we're doing a tour of Cyprus and we're gonna be in both, uh, we've been both in the south and now currently standing in the north of Cyprus. Uh, that's our hotel just over our shoulder here, and this is the second branch that we're in. Lovely little place. Um, anyway, I'm going to tell you about a, a dinner last night uh, by special VIPs later in uh, the context of this. But just while I give you a little bit of a, of a peekaboo of the scenery, let's see if I can um, shuffle over without toppling over the balcony. Pretty damn beautiful. Uh, I'm going to go out a shot here. Uh, and there's the mountains. Um, gorgeous big views I have to say um, pretty damn hot uh, passing through Nicosia that's kind of the border uh, boundary between uh, northern and southern Cyprus on our Cyprus tour uh, must have got heat stroke because I had that immense migraine the car was showing 39 going on 40 degrees uh, I kind of like African I'm good I'm good in the heat I'm good in heat up till about 35 36 by the time we started hitting the 38, 39s, I remember on our bike tour, um, I end up in the evening with big migraines. It must be those blue eyes, eh? Eh? white privilege, eh? playing out. Who knows? Anyway, um, so le let's tell you a little bit about what I want to talk to you about. And it's an interesting one. Okay, so I'll tie it in as the usual Forrest Gump um, roving reporter. I seem to stumble onto a lot of things. Um, just by virtue of fluke and also I suppose taking notice of what's going around me as well. Uh, so I'll tell you uh, how my little travels tend to traipse into things. But before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of a heads up. And I'm also going to do, uh, I want to get my facts straight. And there's quite a few facts on this. So I'm actually holding another device with the other hand. Uh, and I'm just going to give you bullet points over something that's really critical and significant about the whole Cyprus thing. I mean, why should you care? If you're not from Cyprus and you're watching this, you're thinking, what, what the hell? Well, I think you should, because like anything, I don't bring it to you if I, th if I don't think it's of a genuine um, interest. So what's gone on in around Cyprus? Now, for those of you that are a little bit vague on your geography, it's in the uh, Mediterranean that is quite far east. It's just south of Turkey. Um, it's just a little bit west or, and north of Israel and north of uh, Egypt. And um, there is actually uh, energy being found. So a couple of points. In 2011, one of the largest gas uh, findings were made in Block 12. Oil drillers just do Block 12s, um, but it was called the Aphrodite uh, zone. So this is Aphrodite. It's named after the Greek lady of great beauty um, and Cyprus was all excited about these findings. Um, it was done found by noble oil and exploration crowd uh, and more recently um, to tell you a little bit further about other findings because there's been a lot of work and I'll tell you why I assess that this is happening and that there's been a lot of work. Uh, more recently, Exxon Mobil. Now you need to understand the history of oil. Exxon Mobil is one of the many spin-offs of Standard Oil. Standard Oil was Rockefeller. So this is Rockefeller oil by want of any other further name. Made the biggest natural gas discovery uh, in two years off the coast of Cyprus in the Eastern um, Mediterranean. Well, Cyprus is in the Eastern Mediterranean. Now, on preliminary interpretation uh, of the well data, the discovery could be between 5 trillion and 8 trillion cubic feet. Um, now, here's where this brings the EU, the larger EU conglomerate into it. The EU is considering developing a gas hub in the Mediterranean, key to diversifying its energy sources and reducing its dependence on Russia. So here's my take. Um, with the notion that there may be some riches here, 
Um, there has been a heightened degree of exploration and one of the key strategic in the great game uh, concerns is that too much reliance on energy involves Russia for the EU zone. You don't, uh, you're all probably familiar with that. I'm not telling you anything particularly unique, um, but it is important, uh, strategically important. And here you have Rockefeller oil going and digging up uh, and looking to uh, find as much as possible. This was in the Glaucus one well, the Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean, um, and it's going to be pretty damn large. There's never, in my view, been a short of this kind of hydrocarbon energy, guys. If they're motivated and they want to explore, it's in the ground in many places. Uh, given what Russia has been making, um, doing exceedingly well, fighting the financial Cold War um, by buying gold and uh, exploiting its energy reserves, the only way to undermine that is actually um, ensuring supplies from other areas and keeping a glut of energy available. Now, I am bearish the oil price. I'm bearish the economic situation. So this goes right the way through to stand to trading, guys. This is the amazing thing about the three snipers. We look at everything and it comes right down. I'm bearish oil. In fact, I am going to do a free view this is my trade, take these trades and you can potentially not only all earn by verbal contract with me your ticket to come on the course with that single trade, you'll, you'll make more than uh, $12,000 plus, plus, plus potentially or very small stakes. I'm going to share a few of our um, best peak trades that are reset orientated, um, free view with you. Whether you choose to use your proceeds, if they come right, and these are not recommendations, these are just three things I will be doing, and I'm already in, and our premium community is already in, um, and energy plays part of that. Now, it's not a short on oil. It's not as simple as that. Uh, I have a far better version of it, and it involves a particular equity that is super leveraged to oil, and I actually see it losing its market cap. Yes, listen to me losing six sevenths of its market cap. In other words, if it were to be said to be $21 today, which is um, seven by uh, three, uh, I would say it would be $3. It will trade in the $3 in the not too distant future. Okay, so that when you make a market cap call like that, an absolute decimation, you've got to respect that we're taking a fair amount of sticking our head out on the block here. That is a huge market cap decimation. Um, and my guys all know uh, what that trade is and they have taken in positions and it has already begun to move in our favor. So now I'm gonna invite Freeview onto that and I'm gonna explain it to you in a separate technical video. But I'm also fascinated by what's the story gonna be that sees this market cap get decimated. A, it's correlated to oil, so oil is bearish. Oil already looks like inverted HVF structure for me, very brutal sellings. The economy is in a terrible state and there's, uh, the escalation on the trade wars is going to get worse because I'm also going to share, as I've already mentioned, the USD Korean one trade and I will do a technical uh, explanation of our idea of our trade, which will be your free view entry into our community if you were to take it. Um, as well, you'll see it covered, uh, cost covered and a big bonus for you. And you can become, I was one of the guys that won. Ha 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 ha. He's so funny. Okay. Anyway, um, again, it's called, it's a massive call. It's a call for, um, 45 plus loss of value in the Korean one, which is, as you know, uh, related to the Hong Kong dollar, the Chinese one. Um, it may be a Southeast Asian. I'm asking, what's the headline going to be? This is the amazing thing about being technical. We look at the charts and we get a clear, with a real method, we get a clear, clear insight of a major, major financial move. And then I sit here and wonder what the news. Everyone else is doing it the other way. Here's the news, what's the trade? By then it's too late. By then it's too late. I'm asking, is this going to be a North Korea escalation, South Korea escalation? Is this going to be the trade war? And we're going to have all the Southeast Asians. So Korea has um, put on... Um, a boycott of Japanese goods at the moment. I see the yen being super strong. So are we going to get a super mooning 
of the yen and dollar and a major East Asian, Southeast Asian currency collapse. Because, you know, we know, I've already mentioned that Pakistan is, is collapsing. Is it going to also affect the Thai baht and these other currencies? I don't know. I, I have to look again at them chart-wise. But the clear, the main trade for me is the one with a super spike potential with overperformance, which I'll detail in the next video. But this is the whole concept of why it's fun to actually do um, look at the politics, because now we're reverse engineering. We're getting the trade and asking what's the news. Everyone else gets the news and asks what's the trade. Uh, and usually by then it's too late. So lots of fascinating things to come on YouTube. But let's get back to Cyprus and where we are right now. So here you've had this huge find um, by essentially Rockefeller Oil. Um, uh, Exxon Mobil um, and the first well Delphine didn't find anything but this Glaucus uh, definitely did and they think uh, it's going to have absolutely between six to ten tr uh, trillion. Now the East Mediterranean island is located in what's known as and you're going to hear this phrase many times the Levant Basin, Levant Basin um, wh where both Israel and Egypt have found some of their largest reserves of natural gas in the past decade. So if you're thinking why Israel has been um, taking the Golan Heights, it also comes with territorial water with that uh, international water. So the coastline for, I don't know what the exact distance is, I haven't had time to Google it and I don't want to guess and be inaccurate. Um, so the more territory they seize along the coast, the more implied claim they have to parts of the Mediterranean and the Levant Basin. So you have the Israelis, you have Egypt that's found oil, you have uh, a large amount of the eastern Mediterranean that's pushing. Now you might also have seen many of the tweets and many of the things regarding um, Europe gas lines that they were competing, the American and the Russian model for pipelines. One, the Russian one went through Turkey and the other ones they wanted, uh, the Western one wanted to go through Syria and Israel, making, of course, the Syrian, Israel um, and, and the American, America and Israel you need to see as one, as you need to do the Saudis. Um, on that point, for those of you with spare time that wants to do some research, go and research Neom, N-E-O-M, like neon with an N, only with an M for monkey at the end, uh, a super free trade type area that's being established in Saudi that will be fully secular. It'll be like Vatican Square Mile and Washington DC having its own laws and it's going to be positioned very close to the Strait of Hormuz. If you know uh, the Sinai which does this, the water kind of goes like this devil horns that I'm doing. No, I'm not trying to uh, occultist, satanist, anything, but you've got Sinai like this with the water. I'm holding the selfie stick with the other. That's why I needed to do that. There's the one little finger up that goes up to a lot on Israel. They're going to be on that little finger of water coming down from a lot. Uh, Neom is going to be positioned there. Saudi is going to do this free trade area, which is going to have just a short little walk up that little finger of water on the one side of the Sinai Peninsula up into Israel and they're going to have this free trade and it's going to be very close to the Straits of Hormuz where you get that kink in Iran and then in and up. So there's a lot of strategic maneuvering that people are not understanding and not seeing as going on and it's very very relevant in this Middle East. Um, and it's got a lot to do with energy, a lot to do with pipelines and there's a lot of lots of gaming. I would expect that Neom region which is uh, going to be very Israel American uh, friendly um, and it's going to be Western friendly and it's probably going to have some tax incentives and various other huge being built by the new um, Sultan um, of Saudi. You know the one who chops up his journalist enemies inside Turkish uh, diplomacy areas uh, but first gives them a call and to say I got you now. Um, so the real charm man um, that is leading with uh, an iron fist. So that's who we go to bed with. So I always laugh when they say oh China's arrested a bunch of uh, a lot of Muslims in China. That's disgusting and it's horrible and I don't and I condone it. But um, we can't do business. We shouldn't be having trade wars, watching all these various things on China and all of that. Yet we continue to do business with a man who chops journalists up inside other countries' dip diplomatic centers. Um, and that's just died and been put away, as Jared Kushner said it would. Just keep pumping news. Just keep pumping. It'll all blow over that the fact that you are a butcher. 
um, and running a state. But you're good for us. Um, we like butchers. We like to be able to torture uh, anybody we arrest in a jurisdiction for which there's no protection at all, um, as we have done many times before, and flown special flights there with prisoners and then done whatever we wanted to them, waterboarding, probably frying their testicles in hot butter, who knows. Um, the CIA's probably had it all their own way. Um, anyway, so this eco economic, exclusive economic uh, zone of uh, Cyprus, the Cypriots are getting excited. Now, they are obviously, of course, EU tied. Turkey is adversarial to all of this. So we come to the Turkish factor. The gas finding now is energy. Analysts wondering how thorny it will be working with Cyprus, a divided country between Greece and Turkey, um, perched on the maritime edge of two massive gas finds in the Levant Basin. Levithian of Israel, go study and look up that word, Levithian, by the way. There was also an excellent Russian movie called Levithian as well. Watch that too, but that's a separate total sidebar. And Zoa of Egypt, Cyprus lies in a region overlapping rivalries and geopolitical risks. Cyprus is ethnically divided and Turkey, which supports a breakaway Turkish Cypriot state in the north, says Greek Cypriots have no jurisdiction to explore for natural uh, gas. Greeks, uh, Cypriots say it's their rights. So this is the narrative that goes on uh, here on, uh, with regards to this. Um, Greek Cypriots who run Cyprus internationally recognized governments have licensed several offshore blocks to multinational energy companies. Of course they have. Of course they have. They need the armies. Remember, Britain has a huge air base here and military base. When you hear the word Britain, understand aircraft carrier for America. Um, as in the island of Britain and in the same way uh, American flights will have flown out of uh, British bases uh, not only in the UK but also in any holdings they have in islands across the world. In fact you should look at America's empire. I'm trying to remember the book's name. Uh, many people think America is that shape that is in between Canada and Mexico. What you actually need to look at all the jurisdictions that have no voting rights but which are controlled by America and have the dollar. So it includes the Marshall Islands, how they acquired Hawaii, ev islands across the entire world. And this is something kept very, very quiet. These are all aircraft carriers. Um, and a way to uh, exert influence in countries well away from the main American uh, mainland. Go search on that. I've forgotten the book title. There was a great YouTube I saw on it. I wish I had better retention uh, for you, but go have a look for uh, that one. So the American empire extends right away across so many islands. Um, one or two on that sidebar, um, Britain gave to them after first throwing off the locals. The Americans wanted it uninhabited. And rather than have the bad PR of doing it themselves, they said, we will buy that island off you for X million dollars. Um, uh, I think it was Diego, uh, uh, Diego Garcia, blah, 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 Spanish uh, whatsoever. Again, that gives you a footprint for planes to land on long flight missions and to refuel and a military base. Uh, the Brits uh, promptly ousted all the population of that uh, island and should be liable for claims. And this was done not as long ago as you would think British Empire uh, era. Um, but I don't want to have a guess at the years. I'm thinking 60s, 70s, but I'm not too sure. Um, so have a look out for that one as well. But I'm sidebarring everywhere here and trying to give you some background into a number of things. So the EU is considering developing a gas hub in the Mediterranean. But the question is the fear of Turkey. So the Greek Cypriots are engaging um, and giving licenses to American companies. That way they engage the American military because if the Turks intervened on Exxon Mobil, Obama, Trump, any future president, any past presidents that want to chime in, the CIA can say, we have corporate interests that have legitimate licenses to be in there. Sweating like a dog, it's so hot out here. Um, we have legitimate license to be here. Um, and as a result, we can engage our military to protect our interests. So think of the kind of corporations like Halliburton that do a lot of support on oil miners, that do the McDonald's uh, licensing for military bases, etc., etc. This is all going to uh, invoke all these corporations, which all have the likes of Dick Cheney as ex-board members that are also, funnily enough, oil guys with Jacob Rothschild, Rupert Murdoch, 
Larry Summers, a treasury and finance guy, is actually on major shareholder on Genie Oil. Genie Oil, guys, Genie Oil with named Jacob Rothschild, Rupert Murdoch on it that uh, have been granted oil and gas drilling rights in the Golan Heights, Syrian territory, which Israel has just awarded. Israel has awarded licenses for these guys in that corporation to drill for. That is like me giving approval to ExxonMobil to dig in your back garden and remove your swimming pool because I think there's gold, oil or any other worthwhile mineral deposits. I have no jurisdiction over your back garden. I should not have any jurisdiction. Um, and the Golan Heights have effectively been annexed uh, for this corporation to become a gas provider. And this gas provision will in actual fact uh, leads to the undermining of Russia's provision of gas, which they do quite cost effectively um, because they're the big enemy and we need to keep them in the enemy box. We need to keep antagonizing them um, and make them the, the big en enemy. So the notion that there's peak energy is fake. The notion that the economy is strong is fake. And in actual fact, we've biased to the bear side uh, on the energies, but the best plays will be in specific corporations. And I will detail one for you that will get you onto a sniper circle uh, paid just on that one trade if you choose to take it. Not a recommendation, entertainment, yada yada, T's and C's, all the usual. So that'll be one thing I'll come to you with a technical chart on later. Sorry, just getting the lenses all uh, wiped off of the sweat here. We're going to have another scorcher here at about 39, 40 degrees again, I expect. And it's humid by the sea. So um, yeah, a tad hot for me, I have to say, but it's great to be touring Cyprus. So this is what's going on. Anyway, what happened last night? So we were we were popping over. We like a, a nice hotel with a, and it's got a nice restaurant attached to it. We popped over for dinner and we were literally stopped from going in. We had to prove that we were actually guests of the hotel. We look in there. There's all these guys in military uniforms, high ranking generals and um, then men in suits that were clearly politicians of high ranking and security with the wiggly wires all checking us out up, down and centre eating at Archway, our restaurant in our hotel, um, with large, large um, line of cars, uh, police cars that we watched them go. They were driven out, the usual cops that stopped the traffic, um, no less than the uh, Prime Minister of Northern Cyprus, which is a Turkish holding, who was meeting the Turkish general. Also noticed when I was in the bay, there was a military uh, ship, you know, the fancy new wave ones with the radar deflecting with a Turkish flag on it. Then when we were earlier, ironically, in uh, Cyprus, South Cyprus, um, which is the Greek side, um, between Paphos and Limassol, we were passing by and there were military drills being done military defense drills with uh, infantrymen shooting blanks again with a Greek Cypriot similar type frigate um, off the shore with uh, jeeps and everything generals sitting in a uh, well they weren't generals these guys I think they were majors and captains sitting in a unfinished construction house on the edge of the cliff and overlooking the troops doing fire and movement drills um, as I used to do in my infantry uh, days so there's no doubt about it that both militaries for the north and south of Cyprus are on high alert. Um, the problem with finding oil and gas is the vultures come into town and they smell money. Um, no bigger vulture than uh, the likes of Rothschild, Murdoch, Summers, the head of the CIA whose name forget, uh, again doesn't stuck. Um, and Cheney, the probably a 33 and a third degree Mason and 3333 three, three recurring, uh, <laughs> uh, who, who when he shoots somebody, you have to apologize for being in the way of his shot. Um, yeah, uh, just not a very seedy crowd. Um, anyway, so it's clear that the, the, the Turks are going to be uh, quite belligerent. Erdogan made a statement saying that no international country countries have the right to um, explore in what he considers Turkish international waters for energy, um, which is pitting him against um, the US. Remember the US did this major, and I'm pretty sure when Erdogan did his 
government change and he sacked all the academics note to self um, when you are a dictator or when you're taking over control academia is one of the part of the old school you never leave the media and the academia in place control structures one of the key thing they look to control is academia we are in a controlled academia all of this political correctness we've seen this absurd um, blonde female running for the democrats where the entire game is just climate change and white privilege um, this is given to her via academia uh, through the universities. That's not to say humans don't have an effect on climate, but she's running on that and they're all voting for any immigrant, illegal or not, should be given immediate health care. So they don't vote for financially stable and sustainable systems. It's don't worry, don't worry, just spend the money. Spend the money, the entire Democrat brigade. Anyway, digressing and side buying everywhere. Um, but uh, we can certainly say that the Turks are uh, Erdogan's USD try got absolutely moonshot. And actually, we've been short on a number of occasions for quite extended periods. USD try picking up a positive cash uh, carry because they pushed their rates up. It's one of the highest overnight holds uh, positive carry because he pushed rates up to stop the speculators. They ramped the try to virtually, I think against the pound, it was nine. It was uh, possibly even high on the dollar. Um, I was doing it for the pound because uh, my daughter is pound based and just calculating it's now down at 6.6. .6. Um, it's getting to a critical point. It can come off a little bit more, but then we'll have to see what happens. But the pound has been really weak recently. So it's a big, big fall. And all that time that if you'd been short on the try, you actually uh, short the GBP try, long try, short pound, you would have picked up a massive interest rate differential and made money. More trades, more politics, more markets. You can see how my brain works. It goes everywhere um, and it's running and skipping like a monkey uh, on acid up a greasy uh, palm tree. Anyway, um, back, back. so the key element to this is that there was financial warfare already waged on Erdogan. Um, I'm not calling him a good guy, by the way. I'm not got a dog in either of the fights. I don't trust government. I consider government the enemy in all areas. He's seizing control of his country in a Putin-like way over Russia, but uh, some countries run better like that as well. Um, the West doesn't like that because he's got much stronger control, but recently he lost Istanbul, and if whoever holds Istanbul holds the election. So in an election, he's lost favor in the urban areas. So there's a lot going on in um, Turkey, but he's warned Going back to his statement, they're not to. Uh, no one can be given licenses. The Greeks have involved American corporations, which buys them defense and also a share of the revenue uh, and also the favor of the EU that wants less Russian gas. So you can see this is all strategic. So the EU wants the South Greek uh, uh, to win this, uh, uh, this game. Um, but Turkey recognizes this is uh, all going down and has made some very strong statements. He's also came out on the anniversary of the Great War, I think it was in the early 70s, again, a bit murky on the exact year and the exact day when uh, Cyprus uh, split in terms of uh, Turkish versus Greek uh, and you got the North Cyprus, South Cyprus sort of cold war uh, and border set up for which the EU only recognizes the Greek uh, uh, side and not the Turkish. So it's called the Cypriot question, the Cyprus question. Um, he said, we will not hesitate to come in again to repeat what happened in the early 70s to protect Turkish uh, interests and Turkish citizens in there. So what you're seeing is a high degree of rhetoric, and this is being escalated by the role of energy, which is being escalated by exploration, which is designed to undermine Russia. So you can see how this entire macro system all, always has knock-on effects. Um, in a bid to undermine uh, Russia's energy market and to provide gas and oil from alternative sources. I can understand that if I was in the EU, even if I had a good relationship with Russia, it's nice to have more than one provider. You don't want to be held to a monopoly. In principle, I don't have a problem with that as it sounds like smart thinking generally, but um, the whole villainization of Russia I think is unnecessary uh, and I think is a deliberate ploy to keep the military industrial complex going, to keep the spending, to keep the boogeyman threat, to keep the control structure doing what it does, um, always preparing for a war somewhere and spending your money to do that and making viable economic systems unviable by an overspend and a debt-based economy spiral for which the biggest beneficiary is the military industrial complex 
uh, the pharmaceutical and anything that is surveillance technology, etc. So um, we can't have a, a viable sustainable financial system as long as bottomless overdrafts are given to the likes of certain industries in the name of protecting us. Um, let's do less protecting and less attacking. Um, but people will say, oh, there's always one aggressive psychotic nation that wants to dominate. I wonder who that might be. Um, anyway, so you, this, is, this is the dilemma we are in. Um, so last night uh, saw the Prime Minister of North Turkey chatting with the General um, of Turkey. Um, so these are brothers. You can get flights from the local airport direct to Turkey here. Um, Turks come on holiday here. It's considered a province of theirs. Um, and obviously there's good, uh, they want to maintain a very good dialogue, lots of military and lots of security protecting them. Um, and similarly saw uh, in the south side a, a battle drill of infantrymen um, being orchestrated through uh, a valley in typical Cyprus uh, conditions, both involving um, frigate-like, uh, modern frigates uh, flagged uh, with Greek or Turkish uh, offshore uh, ships as part of the drill. These are light and cheap drills. You don't get a boat out with a whole bunch of people uh, and, and put it offshore and monitor a drill from the sea and monitor it from land and have jeeps and boats and various things going on. You don't have big meetings between the Turkish general in a restaurant uh, and a check-in with all the tables bunched together and separate from a handful of civilians. Um, if guys aren't already having conferences today earlier and doing various things. There is an escalation in this area and the likes of Genie Oil with the names I've already mentioned will be at the heart of it. Anyway, a couple of thoughts for you. Made a couple of promises. You're going to need to give me into the new week um, to get some of them out um, on potential uh, trade opportunities for you to trade reset into the sniper circle. Um, and we look forward to having you if you elect to take it. It, it could lose uh, what we're doing as with everything, although our confidence is fairly uh, high. Um, we'll detail it and you'll make your own decisions. It's showing you what we do. It's not a recommendation. Um, this was your update from me holidaying in far off sweaty hot lands um, from North Cyprus after seeing uh, Southern Cyprus. And I expect another 39 degree day. Go to themarketsniper.com if you want to become part of our community and be a trader and get these trades earlier. First, put them on and get regular updates to our looming and our community and our online WhatsApp type structure with setups and everything. If you want to find out more, if you cost is too high for you and you're not ready to make a big investment, go do our self-study. It's all detailed from themarketsniper.com. And otherwise, that's your political update from the Middle East all on energy, all on oil, all on getting second supply to Russia, uh, and all the big players are here and sharpening their knives. I hope it does not turn into uh, military conflict. Till I talk to you again, uh, enjoy your weekend.